and welcome to Homesteader News. I know some of you have been wondering where the heck I've been because I ain't been making many videos. Well, in the summertime, a lot of times I take uh, people and we go up in the mountains and I act as a tour guide uh, for some river expeditions and adventuring, that sort of thing. And that's what I've been busy doing. Uh, and uh, so I just haven't been around my place to make some videos. Uh, so I hope you understand. But I uh, got back and I'm going to be back now for a week or so before I go out again. And uh, while I was on this last uh, adventuring trip with some people, one of my uh, customers brought up a new type of uh, ice chest cooler uh, called a Yeti. And some of you might have seen them uh, in some of the sporting goods stores. And uh, so we started looking at it because he said he was just bragging about how great this Yeti ice chest cooler was. And I've used a lot of ice chest coolers in my life, so you know I had to check it out and see what it was all about. And uh, it turns out he paid about $300 for this thing. And uh, we started looking it over, and uh, the only thing I could see that was different in it than any other ice chest cooler is it had an extra inch of insulation. And because of that extra insulation, uh, it was able to maintain the ice, and we checked it out, it was able to maintain the ice for about seven days. And the ice got down to about the size of your fist, and there was still a piece of ice in there. And a regular cooler, like a, an Igloo or one of the other brands of coolers that I use all the time, they'll probably usually only last about four to five days. That's about it. So in one of these Yeti coolers, you could get an extra two, maybe three days uh, out of your ice. Well, that could be real important if you're up in the mountains or someplace like that, or you don't have access to ice all the time, to make your ice last as long as you possibly can, because you don't want to have to cut your trip short to go back and get some more ice. Or if you're living out in the boonies, you don't want to have to run into town all the time to get more ice if you're using an ice chest to keep your food cold. So, what I'm going to do today is show you how to build a Yeti-style super ice chest without paying that $300, because that's just a ridiculous price, and most people don't have $300 in their pocket for a doggone ice chest. So I'm going to show you how to make one that will keep your ice colder for at least two, maybe three more days. Now, this is really good if you're going to be camping a lot and you want to be out away and don't have to run back into town for more ice, or in an emergency situation where your power goes out and you need to keep your food cold and you may not be able to get ice after you know a day or two of the power out, remember the ice is going to melt at the stores too. So if you go get a couple of blocks of ice and put them in this cooler, you'll be have at least a week's and hopefully by then they'll get the power back on wherever you're living. Or in a situation where you're off-grid, if you're not using any power and you've got a small electric system, power system like mine, maybe you offset that with some ice. Considering that if you buy a block of ice, it's only like a buck fifty at a convenience store. If it lasts you a week, you're only spending six bucks to keep your groceries cold. That's a pretty good deal if you don't want to put out the money for one of the solar refrigerators because those things are expensive. So come along. I'm going to show you how to build this very inexpensive super ice chest that is designed similar to the Yeti ice chest, which everybody is, is really bragging about, for a whole lot less money. So come along. Okay, folks. So what you're going to need for this uh, super cooler project is, of course, you're going to need an ice cooler. Now, they make all kinds of brands and different varieties of ice coolers. Uh, all I would recommend is that you get one with the heaviest uh, insulation that you can. They make ones now that they call 5-day or 7-day coolers. Those are probably a little better. You don't have to run out and buy a new cooler to do this. If you've got an old cooler sitting around your house, that'll work fine. This is my old cooler that I probably had for about uh, 7 years. And it has had a lot of use out of it. In fact, it's had so much use that I broke the hinges and the latch off of it. But it's such a good cooler that I keep it. And now what I do is I just have this uh, bungee strap up here uh, and it's got a couple of places you can see on the side for attaching the bungee strap and I just attached the bungee strap across it that keeps stuff from flying out when I'm driving down the road 60 miles an hour uh, and this is a really good cooler this is a uh, igloo max cold uh, brand cooler and when you're getting a cooler what I would suggest that you look for get this unhooked here is you want to look at the insulation 
in the cooler. Now you can see that this has about a one inch thick wall. Okay, that's where the insulation is. It's also got that same thing down at the bottom. And if you look at the lid, it's got about one inch of insulation in the top lid with a little bit more around the edges here. Okay, that uh, insulation is what keeps the ice from melting so fast. That's all it is. Same thing applies in a refrigerator. The more insulation, the better it works. That's why freezers generally have more insulation than refrigerators do. So one inch is generally considered about R5, resistance 5, which means it will uh, provide that much uh, insulation value. Okay, R5 measures how long it will uh, protect uh, the items and keep them cold inside the cooler. Generally, a cooler like this with an R5 value insulation, which is pretty standard, will usually keep ice uh, from melting for about four to five days depending on how often it is opened and what you're putting in there. If you're putting in already froze or very cold stuff it'll last longer than if you're putting in warm items of course. That's going to melt the ice down. I'm also going to give you some more tricks for making your ice last a little longer. Okay so you're going to need an old cooler like this or a new cooler uh, for this project. Uh, make sure it's cleaned out and good in good shape. Don't use one that's all busted up or anything like that. It should have a good solid plastic sidewalls and everything like that. Then what you're also going to need is you're going to need what they call blue polyfoam board. Okay? And you can get this at any uh, home supply store pretty much. Generally it comes in 4 by 8 sheets which you can see the sheet laying out on the ground out there. I just happen to have an extra sheet or part of a sheet left over because when I built my boondocker camper that you can see on the back of my truck right there, I insulated the inside of that because I use that for camping all the time. And I had some of that uh, insulation left over. And so I'm just going to cut pieces off. A 4 by 8 sheet will give you enough to do probably three coolers. Uh, so if you, don't, if you got, don't have that many coolers, maybe one of your friends or neighbors does and you can uh, share the cost. A 4x8 board will probably cost you about $15. You might even find it cheaper. One inch of this polyfoam uh, insulation board has a resistance of R5. Okay, It's one inch thick. It has a resistance of R5. So by adding this one inch piece of this polyfoam board to the inside of the cooler, I'm then going to add an inch thickness to the walls which is going to give us R10 insulation. It's going to double the insulation on the inside of the cooler. And what that will do, again it depends on your use of the cooler, but that'll add about two, three days or maybe even longer to the cooler. Since this will last generally about four days, if I can get another three days out of this by adding an inch of insulation to the inside of the cooler, that means my ice is going to last me one week. Okay, That almost doubles uh, the amount of time that I can keep food in the cooler, and it re it uh, reduces the cost that I, you know you're only spending a buck fifty for a block of ice, so that's a pretty good deal. Uh, you know, a buck fifty for an entire week's worth of keeping your food cold. Now this doesn't freeze food. If you know how ice coolers work, it's not going to freeze food. It will keep it at a temperature where it's not going to spoil. That's the only thing. You don't want your milk and your meats and stuff like that to spoil, and so a cooler is a great way to keep food from spoiling. So what we're going to do is, uh, all coolers come in different sizes, so there's no way I can tell you what your measurements and cuts and everything like that are going to be. I'm going to give you the general idea and show you how it's done, but it's not brain surgery, folks. All you got to do is first measure the inside of your cooler. So what you're going to need is, you're going to need a tape measure. Get your tape measure out. You're going to measure, as you can see, the bottom of the cooler has a drain in it, okay? You're going to have to measure the inside uh, of the cooler. You're going to measure across both the, the uh, length and the width of the cooler. And you're going to cut your foam board down into a piece that fits into the bottom of the cooler. Then you're going to measure a piece, length, and width for the sides. Now remember that you don't want this uh, poly foam board to come up and hit this edge. Okay, Keep it down below this edge, just slightly down below it, because you don't want it to interfere with the lid. Okay, You want that lid to sit down. If that lid doesn't sit down there solid, you're going to lose your cold air. So you want to make sure that you keep the poly foam board down around the bottom of this edge. You're going to put in your side pieces, your bottom piece first, then your side pieces. Now you can use uh, good silicone gel um, to seal around the edges and secure it inside. And you can make it so you can actually remove that if you don't want it in there. And you're going to leave a place for the drain. So I'm going to show you how to cut that, fit in the pieces. You're going to do the same thing on the inside of the lid. You can see that most of the lids on these cooters have an indentation. You're going to cut a piece of polyfoam and you're going to uh, glue it uh, or silicone it. Uh, right to the inside of the lid. This will give you an extra inch on the lid. It's important to do the lid too, okay? You want to do both lid sides and bottom of the cooler. Now, 
easiest way to cut this is you, you can snap these. These come in pieces, so you can snap them off. They're 16 inches uh, wide already. You can snap them into 16 inch widths, and then you can cut them and work with them that way. That's a lot easier. The only other thing that you're going to need for this project is razor knife like this. Works really well, or just a long handled sharp linoleum knife or something like that. So you measure that, you drop that into your cooler, you use some silicone gel uh, seal to seal around the edges to hold it in place, and do the same thing to the top, and that's your cooler. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these boards, fit them in here, and show you what that looks like. As you can see what I've done here is I've uh, cut some of that blue polyfoam board, put it inside the lid here, and I cut it to fit inside the cooler, and then I use some silicone caulk which you can get in uh, either one of these types of tubes or just one of the hand squeeze tubes. And uh, get, get the type that says mildew resistant acrylic latex caulk. Uh, don't use the colored stuff, use the clear sealed caulk. And uh, this, this will keep uh, the styrofoam in place and it also is uh, mildew resistant so you don't have to worry about building up mildew on the inside of your cooler. And uh, all you do is basically just uh, glue those edges together with that silicone caulk and then you want to go around, you can see where I've went around all the edges and up the corners here with that silicone caulk and seal that up. Now the other thing you will need to do is wherever your drain is in your cooler, you've got to cut out a spot for your drain. So I've got a spot cut down there so the water will drain out. Now you can see that this, uh, you've lost a little bit of room on the inside here, about two inches on the size and wall. So your cooler is going to be smaller doing it this way. However, it's going to keep your uh, ice uh, a lot longer so you may not be able to put quite as much in it uh, depends on the size and size of your cooler you may want to go with a bigger cooler if you're going to do this uh, so that you still have plenty of room to put stuff in but this is going to gain you about three or four more days keeping your ice cold uh, having that insulation in that lid and on the inside of that and uh, will work probably just about as well as the very expensive uh, coolers that they're selling for $300 uh, and it's only going to cost you maybe five bucks to put one of these together assuming that you already have the cooler Okay, now a couple of hints for making your cooler and your ice uh, Also last a lot longer when you buy ice buy a block of ice that'll last a lot longer than cube ice and Also cut a small hole in the in the uh, bag that cut that the ice comes in so that it will drain off the water and drain your water at least once or twice every day. Don't let the water sit with the ice. The, the water will tend to melt the ice a lot faster. Take it from an old camper. If you get that water off of there, you can make your ice last a whole lot longer. If you leave the water sitting around inside the bag with the ice, it's going to melt a lot faster. And then, of course, you want to pack it uh, so that you... Uh, pack everything that uh, pretty tight around it. The more stuff you actually have in a cooler, the less air space there is, the longer the ice will last. So a full cooler will actually last longer than a cooler that's been kept empty, okay, with just the ice in it. And uh, that's about it for building one of these coolers, folks. And uh, I hope you'll give this project a try. This would be good, like I said, for camping, uh, boondocking, and also for people who might have power outage emergencies uh, where you can't get ice or you don't have your refrigerator working and you may need to keep that ice for a long time to keep your medicines and food cold uh, for survival. I'd make up one of these even if I, if you don't camp a lot, make up one of these and just keep it around uh, in case you have a power outage emergency. And uh, for a few bucks, a uh, very worthwhile project. I hope you enjoyed it folks and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>